want to thank you for well, spending this amount I'm of time. dead tired. Why do you have to make those cracks? But I'm dead tired. You fella, I wish you was a fighter. Muhammad Ali showed something no one had ever seen in a heavyweight before. Movement. Not just movement. Almost movement that would rival a plane breaking the sound barrier compared to what was the normal movement of a heavyweight of yesteryear. Ali's best asset was his great reflexes and his great legs. Coupled together, you had a ballet dancer that could punch. Well, you were, you were chasing a ballet dancer around the ring and getting popped by a strong jab that this guy was throwing. You had something that nobody had ever had in boxing before. People had been fast. And people could pop dancing, but nobody could do it like, like Muhammad Ali. That was his asset. He was a star. I, I, and what he had was tremendous reflexes. He was quick, tremendous legs, big legs. He wasn't little. In fact, his body grew as he went along. Ali had movement beyond movement. And yet, the traditionalists thought he did everything wrong, held his hands too low, held his chin up, went straight back. What they didn't realize was he compensated for all of that with movement. He was really a welderweight in heavyweight trapping. His movements those of, dare I say, Sugar Ray Robinson, who not incidentally was in his training camp with him, and honing the natural abilities of a Muhammad Ali. He was a kid that would take teaching, but not the teaching pointing at him. And what I did, I analyzed everything I did with the kid. I knew he wouldn't take that kind of direction from a little midget like me, big, good-looking guy. And what I did, when he'd go in the ring and he'd spar with a guy, he'd come out of the ring and I'd, I'd say, Muhammad, that jab of yours is getting to be magnificent. So I would let him, you're getting down on your knees, you're bending him, and you're snapping it. I even gave it a nickname, Snake Licking. He <laughs> hit him with the shot. Nobody believed this guy. We thought he was just a, a high school kid mouthing off and so forth. It took halfway into his career before people said, hey, you know, this guy can really fight, until we knocked out Sonny Liston, until we, we beat Frazier. And then they began to think, mm, maybe, maybe this guy is good. And by the time we, we planted uh, Fat George in, in uh, in Africa, then they said, well, this guy must be some kind of puncher, because down went, <laughs> went uh, George. The fight with Joe Frazier and Muhammad Ali, the thrill in Manila, uh, it's a miracle that either and both men survived that fight. Uh, both fighters could have easily quit, and, uh, but they didn't. That, that's a fight that brought out the best in boxing and I think the worst in boxing. But nevertheless, it was a titanic struggle between the two biggest names in the sport. And um, it was one of those fights where you just prayed when it was over, both men would be able to walk away. And of course, they both received the, uh, I believe they both went to the hospital. And the effects may have been long lasting, but it was a brutal fight. Uh, I always thought of it as the best and worst that boxing could offer. But Muhammad Ali was so different from anything anyone had ever seen before, the traditionalists, the old timers, poo-pooed him because he wasn't doing anything like a Joe Lewis, like a, uh, dare I say, a Jersey Joe Walcott or a Marciano. He was unique to the heavyweight division, therefore all of boxing.